Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I just recorded a podcast, which was a lot of fun, and now I've got a bunch of unboxings to do. And before I actually unbox the knives that I need to unbox, um, today has been a pretty exciting day. It's not that often that I purchase a new firearm, um, much less often <laughs> purchasing knives. Um, if you're here looking at this gun review, or unboxing I should say, um, I'm typically more of a knife channel. but I own a good few firearms, and recently in LA County, they have started issuing concealed carry permits, which I've lived in LA County now for quite a few years, and they've never been willing to issue them to anybody from, I understand it, other than like judges and very, very high profile people. I'm not a high profile person or a judge, although I can be a little judgmental from time to time. Um, but yeah, just recently in the last couple of months, they've started to issue CCWs. Um, my brother started telling me about it, and then I was looking up videos. I saw guys like Reno May talking about it a lot. And uh, anyway, so I have finally gotten around to getting myself a subcompact. And in California, based on the research I've done, the firearms I've had a chance to shoot, and uh, what's available on roster, which the roster is its own discussion. I think that is a horrible breach of rights that we can only purchase such a limited amount of firearms and that they have to be so oddly configured. Anyways, the best version that I believe is on the market for a subcompact and nine millimeter that is available to purchase on the roster in California is the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield and nine millimeter. So. This is the box that the shield comes in. Um, I actually have the firearm sitting right over here because uh, since I got it out, I've been cycling snap caps through it and just dry firing it a little bit and all that. But I picked it up this afternoon and I figured I'd do kind of an unboxing, show what's in the box, first impressions type of thing. Not really, I haven't even shot this one yet. I've shot the shield before, but not this one. So anyway, let's talk about what comes in the box. And then over the last 10 days, while well, I've been waiting for the 10 day waiting period. Um, I've been purchasing a whole bunch of stuff for the gun, most of which is already in, some of which is still en route. Um, but I wanted to show you all the stuff that I've got for it so far. And then there will probably be some subsequent videos with some of that stuff that I've gotten and then ultimately a full review at some point. But anyway, this is the box that the actual firearm comes in. In here, you find a couple of things. So really, typically, on the set right here in like this foam and plastic pouch thing. You've got paperwork down in here and then there's this little window in there. You'll find the table lock that it comes with and this is also where the extra mag typically sits. So with the gun from Smith & Wesson you get two mags from factory. Um, I'll show you real quick that this gun is clear. These are snap caps. Dummy rounds. They don't they don't go bang. And then in here, let's see if I can show you. That's difficult to do backwards, but <laughs> we're clear. Um, this gun, being a California version, will not fire without a mag inserted. You can also see it's got the loaded chamber indicator that is not sticking up. It's flush, so not only is it empty, but it won't pull. Anyways, you get two magazines in the box. The first one is this eight rounder. The second one is a seven rounder flush fit. So in the gun, you'll also notice I got the green one, by the way. They had one left in green when I was purchasing this and I like OD green. I figured why not change it up? It's gonna be concealed anyways, so only I will know the color most of the time. Anyway, with the eight rounder in, these are both snap caps in them, by the way. You get a little bit of an extended grip, so you get an extra little kind of pinky spot to grab onto. I like that. The gun feels much more comfortable to me with the eight rounder in. Seven rounder is more of a flush fit mag for me. I do get about half of my pinky on it. Um, we'll see in firing it at the range. I feel like most of the times I've fired these at the range they've been with the eight round mag in. So anyway, this one, like I said, is in OD green. It's got the fiber optic sights on it. This is the configuration they had there. And I like these sights actually. First impressions on them are pretty good. I have shot one with these on it before. My brother has uh, this same gun, just not in green. And uh, it was comfortable. It worked well. Um, sight picture was pretty good. I liked it. So you've got red in the rear and yellow in the front. 
that's really not wanting to focus on that part of it. <laughs> anyway, um, I like it. I feel like I get a pretty good sight picture. Um, one thing <clears throat> that does bug me a little bit is, let's put one of these snap caps in the chamber. You'll see the loaded when up, loaded chamber indicator thing up here. Um, if you're looking through the sights, it's not really in the way, but I can see it. <laughs> um, and it does obstruct it just enough that it bothers me. So I've got a solution for that in the box of goodies that I'll show you. But anyways, out of the box, you get the firearm, you get the eight round mag, you get the seven round mag, and you get a little cable lock and some paperwork. So that's all of that. Now, again, this is the gun, no mag in it. Safe. All right, so let's talk about the extra stuff that I've gotten to go with it, because I'm pretty excited about some of these things. Um, I've just been tossing them all in this box while I've been waiting for the gun to get here. So this I actually just grabbed today while I was buying the gun. This is another seven round mag, and I already said I prefer the eight round mag. Um, the seven round is nice if you want to be like ultra concealed, I think, because it's just the smallest platform you can possibly have <laughs> for the gun. So. I'm gonna keep one of these seven round mags stock. That's the plan. And then I've got some extended base plates you're gonna see in a second that work on this. So um, that's why I got a second seven round mag because with some plus twos, that'll take that mag to nine and be really, I think, pretty similar in size to the eight rounder. So that'll be exciting. Anyway, beyond that, I got one of these to try. This is a Hive extension so this is for the eight round mags this will be a plus two on the eight round magazines so that'll take me to 10 which is nice and then here we have an extra eight round so that's probably what i'm going to toss that hive extension onto so again i'll have a factory eight round mag and then i'll have one that's plus two so i'm just going to kind of try some magazine configurations really um let's do let's do all the mags first got these to try mostly just for the range really um, so this is another eight round mag but this one's pro mag this isn't an official Smith & Wesson mag I've heard mixed reviews on these um, some people say they're pretty good other people say they're pretty crappy we shall see I plan to just use these as range mags but I've got that eight rounder and this ten rounder um, so yeah range mags <laughs> we'll see if they function really well maybe they'll be more than that but for now I just kind of have them as range mags um, a lot of people will purchase this gun with the Streamlight TLR6 already on it that's an option um, at least in all the gun stores that I've seen them in and I don't plan to run a light on this all the time that's uh, for me I want to keep this as small and trim <laughs> as is absolutely possible if it's going to be appendix and waistband concealed carry assuming that they'll issue me my ccw we'll see um i've heard they're doing it in la so we're gonna try um so i didn't want it to i didn't want to buy it with the light on it and have to worry about taking it off or anything like that but i didn't end up kind of impulsively just purchasing a tlr6 so that if i ever want to throw it on i'll have it um so this one is specific to the M&P Shield. It fits on both the 40 and the 9. Ambidextrous operation, which is great. I'm left-handed, so I'm going to <laughs> appreciate that. And uh, yeah, this is just the light that goes on this firearm. I don't think there are any others, unless they're very obscure, that are designed to go on here. It's only 100 lumens, which is like, eh, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. So if I am ever like... Maybe I'll be carrying it off body in a bag or something at some point, and I'll want to have a light on it. Now I'll have the option. So I just I picked this up, I think, on Amazon. Uh, all right. Now we've got, I um, ended up just getting two of these. I only have one mag to put them on at the moment, unless I do it to my other seven rounder. But these are those plus twos. Um, these, in theory, should actually work on the seven or the eight round magazine. These are the EMP enhanced magazine plate from Strike Industries. Um, so if you put it on the uh, nine millimeter, either the seven or eight round magazine, it gives you plus two on that. So I'm thinking on one of my seven rounders, I'll put the plus two on. We'll see how I like it. Um, I have seen a, a few other people's videos on these. And from what I saw, the fitment looked okay. Um, the mag didn't seem to sit as flush, like there was a little more of a gap 
than you typically see with factory mags, um, but there is still a little bit of a gap here. It's not like it's perfectly snug. Anyway, we'll see how they end up fitting and working, but if it doesn't work for some reason, I'll just return the mag to stock, I guess. So I got that. And then with all those extensions, so I've got the Hive one and I've got two of those EMP ones to try. Um, in case I end up having any kind of spring issues, uh, most people seem to not have an issue with that at all. I did see one review where somebody with the Hive Plus 2 was saying that uh, the slide was failing to hold open or something on the last round. Um, and they thought it was a spring pressure thing. Anyways, I got some of these plus 10% strength springs. Um, these, I think I got Brownells. Um, yeah, they're specific to the Smith & Wesson M&P Extra Power Mag Springs. So I've got three of them because they're fairly inexpensive. I figured I'd just grab a couple while I was already paying for shipping. And uh, I just have these to try in the magazines if I'm noticing any kind of spring tension issues. Um, I might just toss it in to begin with and see if maybe it seems too stiff and then I'll switch back to the regular one or I don't know. But I've got them here in case I end up wanting them. Um, I mentioned already... I do not like that the loaded chamber indicator sticks up so proud. So I got this. Uh, this is from Apex Tactical. These guys also make um, like trigger kits and stuff for the shield. They do quite a bit for the shield. I may end up ordering some more stuff from them as time goes on. I'm not crazy about this factory trigger. It's not, not amazing, but we'll see at the range if I get used to it pretty quickly. Anyway, uh, this basically deletes the loaded chamber indicator. So it takes it from sticking up to, they make two versions. They make a low profile, which makes it stick up less and it's not like painted red. And they make this one, which is the no profile. To me, I thought the no profile indicator was perfect because I do like to do press checks. Um, that's something that I'm pretty used to, although on the subcompact, it does feel a little small for that. But on a gun like my SIG P226, I do a lot of press checking for the chamber. Now what you'll notice, on this guy is this loaded chamber indicator actually comes up into um, you can see there's a little bit of a cutout there kind of a, a notch that it sets into if that makes sense on this no profile swap it leaves that little square empty so you can just look down in there and if you see brass then you're chamber has a round in it. Um, so I think I like that idea rather than the no profile one. I think that'll actually be better for me because I'd rather be able to visually confirm um, before holstering the weapon or whatever it may be. So I like that. Um, we're going to see how that works. I also, because I bought this and because I should have had one anyways, <laughs> I also just bought this from Amazon. It's a hammer punch set, which I'll need to do that swap. So this was, I think, like 20-ish bucks on Amazon. It says it's made by Froxxi. Froxxi? I don't know. I don't know how you say that. Froxxi. Um, comes with five brass punches, 11 steel punches, two composite punches, um, one composite cap and one rubber cap for the hammer, and then one brass head hammer with a nylon cap on one side. So you can swap those caps, I guess. Anyways, it's just, I figured it would be handy. So that's all the stuff that I got for it. So really, we've got an eight round and a seven round factory mag. We've got an eight round and a 10 round pro mag. We've got a hive extension for an eight round mag. We've got some EMP extensions from Strike Industries. Yep, um, that can go on seven or eight rounders. Maybe I'll play with both, I don't know. And then I've got mag springs. I've got the Streamlight TLR6 non-laser. That's another thing too. They make this with the laser or without. I didn't want the laser, um, I just, personal preference. <laughs> You're welcome to want the laser. I didn't. Uh, but yeah, so I've got a light, a bunch of mags, and mag extensions, and springs, and all that fun stuff to try. And this. This is pretty inexpensive, by the way. I think this was around 20 bucks. Um, and to me, that's definitely worth the difference already in my head. That's one thing I don't like about like my SIG P226. The fact that it has that. It just bugs me. It's not a feature that I want. Um, I don't know. <laughs> You're welcome to want it. I don't. But yeah, it's out of the box. Um, I'm really excited for this. I have, uh, prior to purchasing this, I've fired this firearm a few times because 
uh, now actually both of my brothers have one. I have a few friends that have these. So I've had a chance to shoot not just one, but a couple different examples of this firearm. And uh, it's done pretty well for me. I, I think if I'm being totally objectively honest, in California, um, this is what I would consider. Obviously, I just bought it. This is my choice for a subcompact 9mm for what's on the market. I like how slim it is. I feel like uh, with the 8-round magazine specifically, the capacity is tolerable. But especially if I'm able to do some other things and increase that capacity a little bit, that'll feel great. Maybe I'll carry it with the 8-round magazine and the gun plus 1. That's 9. And then if I've got a 10-round magazine as backup, that takes me to 19 rounds on my person. That's pretty good, I think. Um, we'll see how I end up carrying it but um if i wasn't in california this would not be the firearm that i'd pick i can say with some degree of confidence i really like sig sour it might be the sig p365 um the springfield hellcat makes a very compelling argument um with the suite of features that are on it and the capacity from factory um, this is also the shield 1.0 this is the shield you can buy in california um, not only have they come out with the 2.0 but they also now have the Shield Plus, uh, which actually has not really a double stack magazine, but essentially a double stack magazine. So you get much more capacity for the size, which makes it way more comparable with knives, or with guns. I almost said knives because I'm a knife channel. With guns like the Sig P365 or the Springfield Hellcat. Um, yeah, there's just a California roster. This is what you can get. And so this is what I did get. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Uh, so if you're also in California, then I think this, in my opinion, is the best option. Plus it comes in green, which is pretty cool. Or you can also get it in all black. And then they also make one in like this light gray color. Um, not really my speed, but it looks cool enough. But yeah, this is, I think for where I am, <laughs> this is as good as I can get. And hopefully this suite of stuff that I've gotten for it already will help as well. I do have a couple more things on the way, including um, an appendix and waistband left-handed holster uh, that I'm having made by a &R Design. They also made the OWB holster that I have for my SIG P226, which I've really liked so far. And as a left-handed shooter, it's not that easy to find good left-handed holsters and ANR has done a great job in my experience and from everybody that I've talked to has used their stuff so that's on the way and I think there might even be another mag option something I don't know I've been ordering a lot of stuff for this but uh yeah it's exciting because it's a new gun day so there it is this is my Smith & Wesson Shield 1.0 and uh it's here the wait is over I've got it now we'll see if uh, everybody is correct and they're issuing CCWs in Southern California and LA County specifically, because if they are, that will be very, very, very cool. It has been a major frustration of mine for all of the years that I've lived in LA County that they just would not, they simply would not issue any CCWs. Um, so I hope that's true. Fingers crossed with me, guys. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll probably give updates as I go through the process. I think that's something I would want to watch if I was somebody thinking about it. So I'll try to keep people updated every now and then. But uh, anyways, thanks for checking it out with me, guys. And I'll see you on the next one.